messed up. It's Molly MT here. Um, recording from uh, live from Canada in Oakville, Ontario. Well, I live here, and uh, just wanted to show you guys today on the list we have in uh, a guide on how to make a private server. Okay, now. In order to make a private server, um, we need to have a source, a usable uh, source, which works. Uh, and of course, a client and a cache of the server, depending on what source you want to use. Now, I'd usually recommend mostly going to Moperscape, because Moperscape is really one of my favorites. Moperscape and um, Rune Server, both my favorites. Uh, Websites to get like source and that good downloads of anything about anything or if you want to know about any RSPSs RuneScape uh, RuneServer and uh, Moperscape are the best place to go for downloading sources or clients or in general just knowing knowledge about private servers of RuneScape and In order to make that you need to download uh, a source client and cache like I mentioned which I will be providing the link to the uh, Mop escape and to what do you call it? Uh, to run server by the description bar. Sorry, I'm a little bit uh, tired today. Haven't slept for four days. Been uh, working on this project. Sorry if I sound a little woozy. Um, I, I can't even forget. I just even forgot the website right now, dude. Yeah, I told you, a little was, yeah. These two. And there is also Rune Locus as well. So, yeah, alright, now let's just pick out a source from the list. It's just any random, pretty much anything to do. Let's just say, for example, Insidia. Pretty much just go pick a uh, source and client from either Moperscape or uh, RuneServer.org. Download the source client and cache. Then after the, uh, after the download has finished for um, all three of files, the source uh, client and cache, all you, they will come in actually a RAR or a .zip form type of, uh, like just like this, just the cache and the client and the source will be just like this. You just gotta do, extract over here, or extract files to wherever you usually wanna extract it, wherever, you usually, wherever it's better for you. And then you wait for the for it to extract. After extracting is done, just open up the folder and just one second, I'll let you know what happens next. Sorry, just this thing is taking a while to load. Oh yeah, make sure you also have JDK installed, whether your computer is 30, 32 bit or 64 bit. Now most people have a problem finding that out. I don't know. Some people complain about that. How do we know if our computer is 32 bit or how do we know if it's 64 bit? See, all you guys gotta do here, start from the beginning. Go, go to the start menu. It's the start menu right here. Start menu, right? My computer, you click on it. Then once it's loaded up, you right click over here, hit properties. Once you hit properties, just give it a minute to load. Windows 7 Ultimate Edition Service Pack 1. That's my RAM, and my processor. See, system type, it will say it right here, 64-bit operating system. It will say it right there. No matter what, it will just say it right there. Like on every computer, it's the same way. If you have Windows, of course, I don't know about any other operating system, but I know about Windows, this is how, where you can find it, just in my computer properties, that's it. Now, once you download it and extracted the files, the files will look somewhat like this. The package means that this has the client and the source in it open it twice okay see I uh, opened it right now in city 2 package this is in city X so it's the source and the client as you can see 
and then this is the cache. The cache comes in this kind of form. Also a dot uh, or dot zip, whichever it comes in. Usually it's either dot or dot zip file. And see, you can see this is the cache and everything. So all you gotta do is extract these files, which I already have. Once you extract the cache, the cache will literally uh, show. Uh, there, there's a guide in the cache that will show you how to how to use the cache, like where to put it and stuff like that. Then you open the uh, Insidia source and uh, client. Open up the client first. This is the source, of course. It's as it says source, and this two and this X two means like it's version two, uh, version two release of Insidia X. Open up the client, and then you will usually find Java files, class files, the batch files, and sign file, a sign folder, sorry, and the batch files will be these two. This is like the, how to open the client and compile. Which is the run? The run client is just you double click on the run client. Is this opens the client up, and what the compile does is when you edit something, for example, you edit a couple of things, change the name of the client, or let's just say like um, edit the client or whatever you want to do, you have to compile it after to save it. It basically saves the files, whatever you, your work. Sorry, saves your work, and this is what the run does. The run that batch file just. Oh, sorry, my computer is a little laggy right now. It just opens up the client. Right there. Make sure you have the cache in the right place, otherwise the client will not open. Alright. And then you see these two batch files. Compile and run. Which either it's run or run client, whatever it says. Now you got to right click on these. Edit. It will be something like this, and be asking for JDK or JRE. If it says JRE, replace it with JDK, and make sure you have your JDK. For example, JDK should be located in my computer, depending on your operating system. If it's your operating system 32-bit, it will be in program files. If your operating system is 64-bit, it will be in program files 86. So you open up uh, Drive C. Mine is name is Bootcamp. C C. And then you scroll down. Mine is 64 bit, but I installed it manually onto here, onto my program files. But if your computer is 64 bit and you, you install JDK, you'll probably find it in like program files x86. But mine, on the other hand, is in program files. This is my version of Java right here. So you need to make sure to replace the compile and the run that bad in the source and in the client to your current version of your JDK. Once you do that, on here and here, because as you can see, I've already changed it. Once you do both, then you, once you change both of them, then you compile. You wait for it to compile and uh, save. Couple of minutes, no client the Java used unchecked or unsafe prop. This is not an error, by the way, guys. This just means that it's been successfully compiled. And then you go up to the source. This sh this should be like the source, right here. This is the source. You find announcements, etc., uh, etc., et like the compiler I told you about in the run. And once again, you right click on the run that bat, edit. Look at the file, change it to your JDK version, even if it says GRE, if it says JRE, change it to JDK, and then your JDK model, the model of JDK that you have, usually you should get the latest one is the best, but then again, and then uh, right click, edit on compile as well, JDK, once you're done again, hit compile again, compile properly. There you go. Press on key to continue. Now it should be compiled now. Make sure that you change the IPs. Usually if the IP comes with uh, local host IP. Usually. But if it doesn't, all you gotta do is type client the Java right here. Client usually the IPs are in client.java. 
and in uh, GUI.java, both, both areas. You open client.java. Simply type control F and then type uh, server space equal and then find next which means locate like it's like search find next simply to search and you f find server equals see mine is uh, hooked up to localhost right now hooked onto localhost and you click next again search once again because there's two IPs in client the Java and then you find another IP you should change that to your localhost for now if you're going to be hosting right away then you should change it back to you the um, your hosting IP, I mean your uh, internet Wi-Fi IP, but if you only want to test it and you know work on it and stuff, just hook it up to your local host, which is 127.0.0.1 there's going to be two IPs and client the Java, which is going to be in the source, right just search it up here, and then also GUI.java Let me find this too. Oh, here we go. You don't even need to search it. Here it is. See? This is the IP address once again. I think there is two, isn't there? Or is there just one? Uh, yeah, no, there's just one. A string bar. Yeah. This is like basically the URL where to get the cache from. Basically, says just your your local host. Yeah, that's pretty much it. Yeah, guys, that's pretty much it. Just from here, there's one IP in GUI.java and one IP in Client.java. After that, again, you hit compile, and then you wait for it to compile. I'm gonna close it because I don't need to compile mine because I'm not doing it really change. I never change anything, so I don't need to compile it. And then once it's done, then you're basically good to go. You're basically on there. You can just double click here on the source, run the source after changing the Run the source, launching in CDX, doors loaded, doors listening on port 43590. Make sure this is important. The port has to be set to 43594, sorry. And it always set, it's all automatically always set at that because um, as soon as when, when they release the service, usually when you download them, it's all hooked onto that. And then you run the client as well. Now your computer your computer might lag a little bit, but that's okay. That's that's normal. It's not a problem. It will get better in time. As you can see my CPU is killing it. 96% right there. Information you can change it, for example. For example, I named this one RuneScape. Just like that to see like if it will change names or not. I'll be posting more videos about it. But for example, let's type uh, Insidia X password one two three for example. Connecting the server. Give it like a minute to load because it's just a little bit takes a little bit to load, and then you're good to go. You pick your character, swap, that's it. You get your starters items. Except here. Take a walk. Take a look at some shops. As you see, everything's going to be working fine. I buy anything, you buy anything, okay. So on amulet, you get the money, that's it, there you go. Master PK store. Basically, that's it, guys. If you have any questions, feel free to ask about the source and everything and I'll be putting all the links that you need and all the requirements by the description and once again thank you very much for watching hope you enjoyed please subscribe